How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here again, taking a look at 20.6 stuff, effect of concentration on cell EMF. Uh, our objectives are to calculate the EMF at non-standard conditions using the Nernst equation, which is given right now, and relate it to the equilibrium constant. <clears throat> All right, so as reactions proceed, the concentrations of the ions involved change. So basically, if this is our reaction, I got copper ion being attracted to the zinc, zinc giving its electrons up to the copper, uh, which is going to reduce the copper and oxidize the zinc. Well, what's going to happen eventually is all of that zinc ion is going to dissolve into that solution, and all of that copper ion is going to get used up. So the concentration of the copper ion is going to decrease, right? So the concentration goes down. Uh, and what's going to happen at the zinc anode? Well, the copper is going to continue to get reduced there, and it's going to form a copper film over it because the copper is being reduced. So eventually the concentrations get too low for the reaction to proceed at all, and that's when you get dead batteries. That's what happens with a dead battery. The concentrations have gone to zero and have all been used up, and it's dead. All right, process stops. No more voltage. So taking a look at a voltaic cell, the classic zinc-copper voltaic cell. Zinc will lose its electrons to the copper ions and reduce them. The anions will go across the salt bridge and the cations will do the same but towards the cathode and then what happens is the copper is going to get used up so its concentration is going to go down and what's going to happen on the zinc side is the concentration of the zinc is going to go up because we're making more um, <clears throat> zinc ions, right? So we had zinc, it became zinc plus two and then it's going to dissolve in solution so its concentration will go up but the copper concentration will go down. Okay, so how do we figure out what the voltage is at different concentrations? We have this equation, we know delta G equals delta G naught plus RT ln of Q. We also know that delta G has to equal negative NFE from previous equations and stuff we were talking about. So why don't we plug that in? We plug in negative NFE to delta G and negative NFE naught for delta G naught and it, the rest stays the same. So now we want to divide everything by negative NF, because we're going to try and get the voltage by itself. So what do we get? Well, we get E equals E naught minus RT over NF times LN of Q. This is known as the Nernst equation, and it is our go-to equation for figuring out, figuring out the voltage at different concentrations. All right, so E is the cell potential at the non-standard condition. The E naught is the standard cell potential, so at standard conditions. The R is the gas constant, and one we're going to be looking to use is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. T is the temperature, and it's got to be in Kelvin. N is the number of electrons being transferred. F is that Faraday's constant, and Q is the equilibrium expression, but with values plugged in, so it doesn't have to be at equilibrium. All right, so classic example. What is the E for the following reaction where the concentration of zinc plus 2 is 0.5 molar, and copper plus 2 is 2 molar at 298 Kelvin? Well, first we need to look at what's the reaction here, because if I'm going to be talking about Q, I need to know what my products are and what my reactants are. So I'm taking a look. It looks like I'm starting with Cu plus 2, so that's going to be my bottom. I'm going to put Cu plus 2 concentration on the bottom, and that means the zinc plus 2 is our product, and it's going to go up top. Remember, the solids drop out, so we don't have to include them in our K expression. All right, so now, now what? Well, now we're going to recall this equation. And, right, so we're figuring out E. We need to know E naught, and that's something that you can figure out just by looking up these things. So you figure out E naught, R is at 8.314, T is 298 Kelvin, N, well, what's going to happen here? Well, I know I got Zn going from 0 to Zn plus 2, by losing two electrons, and I know that the copper is going from plus two and gaining two electrons to become copper zero. So how many electrons are being transferred? Two. So N equals two. And F is a constant. So now we just plug it in. This voltage, I, I cheated. I'm not showing you the work because if we've done this before. You look up the standard reduction potentials and you figure out the E naught for all those things. For copper and zinc, it's 1.1 volt. R is going to be my 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin times uh, 298 Kelvin 
divided by 2 because I got 2 electrons being transferred times F, which is that 9650, and then ln of Q. Well, Q is going to be products over reactants. So I look, zinc is 0.5. So that's my product side, and my reactants is 2. So it's going to be 0.5 over 2. Then you just plug and chug, and you get 1.12 volts. Okay? And that's, that's how you use this equation. It's crazy, I know. All right, so a new concept. I think this is pretty neat. So they're called concentration cells. I'm sorry, concentration cells. And I'm going to try to explain them conceptually before we get into math and stuff. So we start with two cells with the same substance in them, but they're at different concentrations. So you can see here, I got zinc on the left side, but I also have zinc on the right side. And the only difference is their concentrations. One side has a low concentration, the other has a high. So if there was a way for the zinc ions to diffuse from one side to the other, they would, right? Because things like to diffuse from high to low concentrations. There's this concentration gradient. They want to diffuse from high concentration to low concentration, and it's that motivation that is going to give us our cell potential, right? So this concentration gradient provides a, pro a cell potential. The voltage is going to be greater than zero because those ions wanted to go from high to low, but they can't directly. But what they can do is they can send electrons from one side to the other. So we can send electrons across. I think I got this animated. Um, so zinc is going to oxidize on the dilute side because we need to increase the concentration on the dilute side. So how is that going to happen? Well, the zinc is going to oxidize. And on the side where it's high concentration, we got to lower it. So how are we going to do that? We're going to reduce those cations. So zinc on the diluted side plus zinc ion on the concentrated side is going to give us zinc ion on the, on the diluted side and zinc uh, zinc zero on the concentrated side. So this is going to continue until the concentrations are equal because once they're equal there's no more um, kind of diffusion if you want to think of it that way there's no more motivation for them to keep going. All right so the zinc on the low or the diluted side is going to give up the electrons. It's going to oxidize. It's going to diffuse into its solution. The zinc ions on the other side are going to get reduced. So they get reduced, and they're going to plate onto that electrode. And the concentrations are going to keep changing. The diluted side is going to go up. The concentrated side is going to go down until they are equal to each other. Once they're equal to each other, it's done. There's no more potential. There's no more reason for it to keep going. So mathematically speaking, we know that E equals E0 minus RT over NF times LQ. Right? E0 is going to be 0 because it's the same half reaction on both sides. Uh, one potential will be the same, just the opposite sign, right? So if I'm taking a look at the reduction potential of zinc, that's going to happen at the cathode. And if I look, the opposite thing is going to happen at the anode. So it's the same magnitude, just different sign, which means my overall potential is going to be zero, right? So the E0 for this is zero, but you can still get a voltage if there's a concentration difference. So if the concentrations were equal, right, then I know Q is going to equal one, right? If Q is going to be uh, products over reactants, and if they were equal, it would be 1 over 1. And what's ln of 1? Well, it's going to be 0. So this whole thing would become 0 in that situation. But if we have different concentrations, we can get a non-zero number. right? So what is the cell potential of a concentration cell made with 0.1 molar zinc plus 2 and 5 molar zinc plus 2 at 298? So I can see here I got the diluted side. This, I have the concentrated side. So I know that this is my overall reaction, right? I got the diluted side becoming oxidized and the concentrated side becoming reduced. So that's what's happening. So I know this equation. I know E equals E0 minus RT and F uh, L and Q. So now I go, all right, well, I know my E0 is going to be zero because it's a concentration cell. And I know R is a constant. I know a temperature is given to me in the, the problem. And i got to figure out how many electrons are being transferred. Well, this one, it's kind of straightforward. It goes from 0 to plus 2. So I know that there's going to be two electrons involved. And F, again, is just a, a uh, what do you call it, a constant. Now, Q, you got to look out for. So this can get a little bit confusing. Remember, it's going to be the products over the reactants. Now, for this, I always write out the equation, and I always put concentrated and dilute so I can keep track of things. So the product is going to be the zinc plus 2 ion on the diluted side. So I usually represent it by, you know, dilute, 
concentration on dilute side over the concentration of the concentrated side. So now I can just plug those numbers in. I see I got 0.1 on the dilute side, so 0.1 over uh, 5 on the concentrated side, so 5.0. And now I'm going to plug it all in. All right, so I got my R constant, my temperature, N equals 2, my C, ln of the diluted over the concentrated. So I plug those numbers in. And then I just plug and jug, and I get a 0 0.050 volts. Now, if I were to confuse the diluted side and the concentrated side, it's not going to make a world of difference. What it's going to do is it's going to give you a voltage, but it'll be a negative voltage. So if you switch diluted and concentrated, you get negative 0 0.05 volts. Just know that you goofed and you switched them up if you did something like that, or you did something wrong somewhere else. Right? So just let that be a signal to you, hey, something went wrong. All right, so what happens when the cell is dead? Uh, well, E equals E naught, right? This Nernst equation. Well, when it's dead, I know that the E has to equal zero, right? And when it's dead, it's at equilibrium, so this Q becomes KEQ. So now I have this equation in terms of E naught and KEQ, which may be helpful if they're asking me for, hey, what's KEQ or, you know, the EMF, solve for the other one. It's just algebra. I'm not going to talk at you about that because it's algebra. You, you see it, you do it. All right, so to summarize, Nernst equation, know it, love it, make it your friend. Q is the reaction quotient, don't forget it. And at equilibrium, E equals zero, and Q becomes KEQ. And that's it, all right? Uh, oh, yeah, and concentration cells are a thing, so know that they exist and understand what they are. Hope you found that helpful. See you in class. Okay, bye.